Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today I'm talking about uh, two-stroke direct injection. Now, I did a video on will it ever save two-stroke, so on and so forth. Well, I did make clear in that video, and a lot of people started going on about it, which is fair enough. Is about um, there are different types of direct injection. So, <laughs> beautifully, there is direct, direct injection, and there is indirect, direct injection. Great. So, um, anything outside of here, so basically your reeds are here. Now, I know people are going to start screaming, I've never seen a two-stroke like that. Well, there are two-strokes like this. Um, there are a lot of two-strokes like this. There are different ones. One thing I will point out is some people, some guy did say, my KX250 doesn't have a reed and a port that goes into the crankcase. And yes, it does. What he did, what he, what confused him was that the fact is that this reed block section here with your inlet um, is part of your cylinder, um, your cylinder assembly. And it's still... If you can see your crank through there, even if it's in your cylinder, it still is a crankcase-fed engine. And as far as I know, every single two-stroke two uh, two diesel, every single two-stroke engine that I have ever seen um, has crankcase breathing. It's a scavenging crankcase system. There are more. I haven't seen a two-stroke diesel in per... Oh, no, I have seen a two-stroke diesel in person. What am I talking about? I haven't seen... A marine uniflow two-stroke diesel on a ship before I know how they work but I haven't seen one in person um, but every single and this is a motorbike channel at the end of the day um, but yes if even if this port section here is on your cylinder if you can see your crank through there you can poke it with a bit of wire it is a crankcase breathing uh, crankcase breathing two-stroke petrol engine right so pushing all that to one side so we have direct injection so what basically defines direct injection anything that's inside here anything that's inside here if it's exterior to the engine if it doesn't have access to the cylinder um, or crankcase then it is not direct that's just fuel injection we just call it fuel injection it's outside of the system so if you have an injector uh, outside your reeds or outside your main block then it is not direct injection but there are two types, so we'll look at indirect fuel injection. Indirect fuel injection can be sat behind after your reeds, so it's facing your crank. It can be a transfer port injection, so you can put your injector here, you can put your injector here, you can put your injector here. These are all indirect fuel injectors. Um, indirect direct fuel injection. But and basically the way this works is that it what it gives you it gives you electronic control of your fueling so you can start to run lean and it can work out load speed mass airflow rates and crankcase pressures and so on and so forth to deliver the right amount amount of fuel it's basically the upgrade away from carbs you're getting rid of carbs because they have some of their drawbacks and all the rest of it and usually they have some kind of oiling system or they have a, what looks like a car body that basically just supplies oil um, to the airflow and so on and so forth. So the next kind of direct, direct injection, but it has um, two ways of working, is that usually it's in your head. So let me just put these are indirect. Um, usually it's in your head, it can be actually in your cylinder to one side depending on how they want to do it but generally speaking it's in your head, in your cap. Um, now there is two ways to do this which is very important and we have a high pressure system and a low pressure system. So the way, and they both have their pros and cons, so as your piston starts to descend it will uncover your transfer ports and then as soon as it starts to come back up or basically on its way down, it depends what the manufacturer wants to do, they can spray the top of the piston um, with fuel and because it's in your cylinder, it's direct injection. Um, so they, on your pistons on its way down, it can spray fuel then, let the uh, fuel basically evaporate off the piston, taking heat with it, cooling your piston, and then you go through your compression stroke. 
The problem with that is, is that it depends when you do it, fuel still goes out of your exhaust port. Um, if you wait until the piston's on its way back up and covers up the transfer port, um, you still get the same issue with it pissing out the exhaust port because now the piston's on its way up, it starts to compress the mixture, but it can't because there's a big gaping hole in there. But there are different ways that you can try and do it. The, uh, the beauty of this system, of this, this is a low pressure system, the piston's on its way down, the entire cylinder volume's there, the pressure is quite low, then it can squirt into that happy merry and all the rest of it, it then gives the, um, because it's lower pressure as well you don't have to atomise the fuel as much, which means that when it sprays onto the cylinder walls and the piston it evaporates, you get good mixture, good burning, apart from the shit that pisses out your exhaust. Um, then you have a high pressure system. Now this is the system that everybody wants. This is the system that manufacturers want to do. The problem is, is that it's high pressure. And the way this works is, is as your piston comes up, it closes off your exhaust port, just like a diesel. You then fire your injector. You fire your injector at seriously high pressures to overcome the pressure that's in the cylinder and even more pressure to atomise the fuel properly, otherwise your combustion is going to be lumpy and shite. Um, it sprays it onto the top of the piston, you get a bang. Now the other problem with this is you do not get as good uh, of a cooling situation than you would if you spray fuel onto a piston. It's the evaporation um, of the fuel that does a hell of a lot of cooling. So these systems tend to run really hot and with a two stroke that's a really bad thing. And this is why it's difficult. This is why high pressure. The other thing is it's how you make that high pressure. How do you make that high pressure? You start using the engine then you're supping power out of a system that was very simple and had a lot of power in the first place. Um, so like I say there are loads of different types. And there was a guy who came up and say, started going on about pressure saying you don't need 2,000 bar, you don't need a 1,000 bar, you don't need this, that and the other, you know, you need a, a 35 at one point he said, and then he cited a, a Formula 1 video because they have gasoline direct injection, but if you actually read the article, what happens in Formula 1 is that they actually squirt the piston on its downstroke, and this is a four-stroked um, fuel injection, direct fuel injection. Um, they squirt fuel on the piston on the downstroke so the fuel cools the piston then it can evaporate and it evaporates up into the floor and then when you come and push it and compress it you get a really good mixture so even they are not doing what diesels do at the last second spraying fuel in and even diesels do not spray all their fuel in uh, before top dead center you know diesels generally have quite a slow um, in, I say slow, slow compared to what people think, diesels will actually pulse quite a lot even when the piston's on its way back down to bottom dead centre um, because there's still oxygen in there and diesel's really quite slow burning so that's why they want to get it in there just before TDC to start combustion off but diesel injectors generally pulse quite a lot and add fuel after top dead centre. Anyway, that's diesels and we'll get onto that another time. Hope this makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.